I guess we should get this show started. Here we go. Hey guys, it's PSVR Gamescast Live, uh, and this is a, an impromptu, impromptu version of Gamescast Live, uh, and Dave's already gone. <laughs> <laughs> because we got some amazing news today over on the PlayStation blog. Um, Justin Massengill, I believe, posted a, a blog update about the brand new PlayStation 5 DualShock 5, not called DualShock, which was the first fucking blow, <laughs> controller called the DualSense. Man, there's so it's much actually, to talk about. Uh, Hideki Nishino. I'm sorry? Hideki Nishino. Uh, oh, it wasn't Justin Massengill? Uh, yeah, Damn it. No. Product no, he's like the community, the drop dude. Okay. Um, Sweet. Well, look, guys, I think we should, I think there's a lot to tackle here. I think, obviously, there's a, they, they talked quite a bit about the controller. We've got some, I've got a couple images of it. Um, but I think what we should do first and foremost to make sure everybody's on the same page, we should just read the article, man. We should make sure that everybody knows what we're talking about. It's time to yeah. reveal the dual sense. The dual Here's sense. the thing. Can you guys hear me? Can you see me? Yes. I can. Okay, my laptop froze the second. Okay, so let me read it then. Conveniently enough. That is um, very I convenient. I mean, I can still read it, but. No, you, you don't. You need to. No, you don't sound very good. <laughs> um, <laughs> also, what's up, everybody in the chat? Thank you for joining. Um, all right. So uh, it says introducing DualSense, the new wireless game controller for PlayStation 5. This is our first look at it. Um, this article, like as stated before, was uh, by Hideki Nishino, the senior vice president, platform planning and management. Um, and he says, we've reached an exciting milestone with PlayStation 5 as we're starting to ship our new controller in its final design to developers who are implementing its unique features into their games. But first, we wanted everyone in the PlayStation community to get a first look at the DualSense. So it's no longer the DualShock 4. Uh, DualSense wireless controller. And here our vision... <laughs> stop it. <laughs> and here our vision for how the new controller will captivate more of your senses as you interact with the virtual worlds in PS5 games. The features of the DualSense uh... along... <laughs> For real, man. You're killing me. Every time you say the, DualSense. <laughs> the, uh, the features of the DualSense, uh, <laughs> along with PS5's Tempest 3D audio tech, will deliver a new feeling of immersion to players. Can we can we take turns reading uh, paragraphs? Because now I'm back. Okay, hold on. Let me let me get through. Let me read this last one, and then you can okay. do the rest. Uh, when PS4 launched in 2013, the DualShock 4 wireless controller garnered a lot of positive feedback from gamers and developers for being the best PlayStation controller yet, and for introducing forward-looking features like the share button. This brought us to the next question. How do we build on that success? Take it away, Dave. How does one build on that success? Well, as you'll see in the article here, this is where we see our first image. And uh, Brian, I assume you've got that up on the screen now. Indeed. You guys have all seen it by Absolutely. now. And they say, after thoughtful consideration, we decided to keep much of what gamers love about the DualShock 4 intact, while also adding new functionality and refining the design. Based on our discussions with developers, we concluded the sense of touch within gameplay, much like audio, hasn't been a big focus for many games. We had a great opportunity with PS5 to innovate by offering game creators the ability to explore how they can heighten that feeling of immersion through our new controller. This is why we adopted haptic feedback, which adds a variety of powerful sensations you'll feel when you play, such as the slow greediness of driving a car through mud. We also incorporated adaptive triggers into the L2 and R2 buttons of DualSense, so you can truly feel the tension of your actions, like when drawing a bow to shoot an arrow, which is a thing we do a lot of in VR. Um, True. This provided us with an exciting challenge to design a new controller that builds off of the current generation while taking into account the new features we're adding. For example, with adaptive triggers, we had to consider how the components would fit into the hardware without giving it a bulky feeling. Our design team worked closely with our hardware engineers to place the triggers and actuators. This is getting a little in the weeds, but okay. Hmm. The designers were then able to draw the lines of how the exterior of the controller would look and feel with the challenge of making the controller feel smaller than it really looks. In the end, we changed the angle of the hand triggers and also made some subtle updates to the grip. We also took thoughtful consideration into ways how to maintain a strong battery life for DualSense's rechargeable battery and to lessen the weight of the controller as much as possible as new features were added. Uh, for the buttons, you'll notice there's no longer a share button as we had with DualShock 4. Don't worry, it's not going away. In fact, we've built upon the success of our industry-first share button 
to bring you a new create button feature. This is exciting for me, just sidebar. With Create, we're once again pioneering new ways for players to create epic gameplay content to share with the world or just to enjoy for themselves. We'll have more details on this feature as we get closer to launch. So that part's really exciting for me. Oh, hey, what's up, Nathan in the chat? All right, should I keep going or just, Brian, you want to take the last part? Oh, no, no, keep going. Keep going, man. Okay. I'm waiting for the coffee to kick in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. DualSense also adds a built-in microphone array, which will enable players to easily chat with friends without a headset, ideal for jumping into a quick conversation. But of course, if you're planning to chat for a longer period, it's good to have that headset handy. Now let's talk about the colors. Traditionally, traditionally sorry, our base controllers have a single color. As you can see, we went a different direction this time and decided on a two-toned design. Additionally, we changed the position of the light bar that will give it an extra pop. This is going to be a big deal. We'll talk about this later. On DualShock 4, it sat on top of the controller. Now it sits at each side of the touchpad, giving it a slightly larger look and feel. Just to clarify, he means this thing ain't here anymore, and it's along the sides of the new touchpad. Um, in all, we went through several concepts and hundreds of mock-ups over the last few years before we settled on this final design. DualSense has been tested by a wide range of gamers with a variety of hand sizes in order for us to achieve the comfort level we wanted with great ergonomics. Our goal with DualSense is to give gamers the feeling of being transported into the game world as soon as they open the box. We want gamers to feel like the controller is an extension of themselves when they're playing, so much so that they forget that it's even in their hands. And then, uh, Brian, you'd be Jim Ryan. What does Jim Ryan have to say here? Oh, man, you make, you're making it sound like I'm reading along or something. Um, <laughs> I can I can That's scroll down. Quote from Jim Ryan at the Here end. we go. Jim Ryan at the end says, "We are thrilled about sharing the final look of the DualSense ha ah, controller with our fans, and we can't wait for everyone to get their hands on it." I'd like to close with a message from Oh <laughs> yeah, fast forward from SEI President and CEO Jim Ryan to the Jim Ryan to the community. Quote: DualSense makes a radical departure from our previous controller offerings and captures just how strongly we feel about making a generational leap with the PlayStation Five. The new controller, along with the many innovative features of PlayStation 5, will be transformative for games, continuing our mission at PlayStation to push the boundaries of play now and in the future. To the PlayStation community, community, I truly want to thank you for sharing this exciting journey with us as we head toward PlayStation 5's launch in holiday 2020. I just want to say they're doubling down on that. Pay attention. We look forward to sharing more information about PlayStation 5, including the console design, in the coming months. And that's it. That's the article. So I think we need to. I think we need to kind of tackle this uh, kind of piece by piece here, don't we? Yeah, because the first thing I did was like I looked at it and I was like, huh? Yeah. Like, I think I think it caught everybody off guard. Um, I don't think anybody was expecting the way it looked. It doesn't have a wow um, factor. First. It looks kind of boring. It looks kind of like it looks like the Ouya controller or something. It's... Well, I had a couple concerns at first, and then I I put it up to a picture of the DualShock Four. And I hopefully that is it is accurate. But the one thing, the first thing I noticed was, wow, this looks too much like an Xbox controller, um, because sure. I don't like the Xbox controller as much as I like the DualShock Four. However, upon further examination, um, if you notice, like this controller is really round and bulky right here, mm -hmm. and it actually gets pretty thin um, on on that one. And I think that's what's kind of what threw me off at first. So, you know, it. The other thing, too, is that the buttons, I, I had to look at the other angles of the buttons to make sure that the buttons were poking out. Because yeah. if you look at it looking straight, like it looks like the buttons are like in the controller, practically. Um, so I was happy to see that the buttons still poke out because that's one thing I like about this more than the Xbox controller is like the especially the dual, um, what you got the D pad. Um, I don't like the D-pad on the Xbox controller a whole lot. Um, I, you know, other things I think are fine, but the D-pad, I was like, it, it doesn't even compare to the DualShock Four. But you're right. From, um, when you when you first look at it from face on, it looks like the it looks like the face buttons are flat and, and like right. almost like touch sensitive or something. And so I'm really happy that they provided us with that alternate angle, like the isometric angle, because from that angle, it almost looks. I mean, other than the color scheme, it looks identical to a PlayStation. For DualShock 4 controller, I mean, like from that angle, it just looks. If I wasn't paying attention, I'd be like, "Oh yeah, that's just a different color scheme for a DualShock 4." Um, so it's it's not as a radical of a departure as as I think right. it looks. As it looks at first, exactly, exactly. But I, but you know, uh, 
man, this, I don't know. Like, I wish I, 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 this is obviously they're showing us this color scheme. I'm assuming this is what they're going to ship with. So now Absolutely, I'm curious, yeah. like, what the PlayStation Five is going to look like. Right, it's I know. It's going to be white. It's going to be white and black. I'm it's hoping be tone like this. I think. Yeah, I think it. Uh, I think it will be two tone. Follow the design template of the PSVR, actually. I think because this is the design template of PSVR, this futuristic black and white two tone. That's thing. actually true. Um, and so, if the PS Five looks that way, then their whole ecosystem has a similar look and feel to it. Um, so I think that's a good, good uh, thing on their part. Um, I've always liked the the gray and the white PS4s more. Um, I've got the white PS4 Pro, and I love love the white PlayStation. Um, I think it just looks really sleek, really clean, um, and it just it just kind of stands out a little bit more. Um, just looks looks really nice. So yeah, I'd imagine this is going to go hand in hand with what the PS5 actually looks like. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I mean, pretty much every time the uh, the controllers that ship match the system, I mean, they have to kind of like right. That's always been the case, so. right? And then they'll, I'm sure they'll have customized colors later on that you can. Um, oh, that, absolutely! They'll have that, you know, colors. They'll probably have different color schemes. Like a, I don't know. I'm I'm interested to see if they'll actually have like a flat black or flat white one though. Yeah. Um, well, the, the stuff that I'm actually really interested in the most is. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I was out there for a second. My computer cut out. But did you guys already talk about the light bar? No, no, no. no, no that's okay. I figured before yeah. we before we even talk about any of the functionality of it, just get the basics, the look get and the feel. aesthetics yeah. out of the way. Uh, yeah, look nice. the buttons. If you notice the buttons, the the R one and R two buttons are pretty big. The R one button especially. Yeah, they're they're very raised compared to me looking like here. Yeah, to this. I'll say just a, my my final word on the color scheme is that. I mean, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, I got to say that my favorite color scheme so far for any controller uh, was when they when they did the steel gray with it was steel gray with the black dual shock, and I was like, man, I wish this was the color scheme for for the dual uh, for PlayStation Five. But you know what? It's like, but honestly, once you get your hands on it, you're not really looking at it. You know, it's like as long as this thing feels comfortable, and and, and that they spent a lot of time on this PlayStation blog talking about about how it feels in your hands, how how it it feels right. smaller than it is even. Um, so they're talking a lot about ergonomics, <laughs> and and I like that. I I agree with them that the DualShock Four is probably their best controller, except for one thing: the original build was had a really bad durability problem. This is yeah, like. Right. The revamped my white controller that that works fine. What was the dur- this, um, just before you get f- further on? What like, was the durability problem? Because I've, like got, I've this, got two launch ones and they're still great. You've got two launch ones. Yeah. Well, the plastic <laughs> used to rip off of these. The buttons used to get jammed and break. The oh, springs really? used to break here. Um, yeah, it, it, they they had a, a big durability problem. Yeah, look, I mean, look how shredded this one is compared to this one, and I use this one a lot more. Um, and this is my like original one, and it's just torn apart from letting people uh, play it. And so that when you know, but but I agree. The biggest change that they did was they did kind of I think take a page out of Xbox's book and made the the R twos more like a trigger, a trigger feel. And it looks like they're continuing to do that, except this time they've got the R one is a lot bigger, and I think that's a good call because. The R ones when they're the R two is a, the the L two and R two are a lot bigger too. If you look at the um, the close up, I don't know Brian if you can bring up that view where it's like like this where you can see the charging port and stuff. Sure. If you look at a normal DualShock Four right now, there's not much play right there. There's a little bit of play. This looks like it has significantly more uh, because I think like the the haptic. You know, if you've got these different levels of pressure, Let's I see. feel like you need a little bit more room to play with. I could be overthinking it but yeah those buttons look bigger to me and yeah like there's more depth below it i it's it's kind of hard to tell without actually holding it but it actually kind of looks the same to me like it has like this little lip like this little trigger that comes off um the the r1 button is definitely bigger yeah. i could see but to me personally the the r2 looks the yeah, same it, it doesn't look any different to me either um, but um, but again, but without without actually seeing it in person, side by it side, stuff, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm putting I'm actually putting my tool shock up to the screen just to put them side by side. Yeah, um, and you so can kind of see what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, oh, it's yeah. just me conjecture, but it, it looks a little different. I do think, like AJ said, they're a little. 
I think everything's going to be, I think everything's going to look and feel a little bit different when we get to get our hands on it. Um, yeah. And so, I, and I think that's probably, yeah. Yeah. Zippy says know. also love the USB C and yeah, this is yeah, USB exactly. type C. That's about the modern thing to use. The good thing about that is that enables like fast charging. Um, that is where this fast charging technology started with was type C. So um, if, if not like USB 3.0 or something, but uh, that's going to be important. Um, he did mention the longevity of the uh, battery life. You know, that's going to be important. That's going to be interesting to see because with all these features, which we'll get into in just a second, um, you'd imagine it's going to be kind of taxing on the uh, on on the uh, battery life. Yeah, I mean, the DualShock, the current DualShock 4, I mean, I feel like I can play a game like literally all day long. If as long, oh yeah, with with, with you know with any, with, I've got one controller of the three I have. Only one of them really sucks with battery life, and the other ones, all day I can play with the DualShock Four. Yeah. So depending on, I haven't had that. That's not my experience. Um, oh, I hope they get something like the Nintendo Switch Pro controller's battery life, because that thing lasts fucking weeks, man. Like, I mean, that's I don't, yeah. Nintendo is a totally different story. It, Those things yeah, are amazing. Yeah, no, the Switch Pro controller has. Incredible incredible battery life and if they have been able to replicate something like that um that would be awesome and quick charging is good too because you know even if it does run out pop it back in 20 minutes here so uh yeah uh alan gore gamecat yes this is the official look of the new controller um official this is from playstation themselves this is not like a a rumor or speculation or anything. So you guys want to, uh, I think, um, I mean, so the last couple of things you notice right away is uh, that, is that a touchpad? Like, or is, the, is that so, the, is that the touchpad coming back again? So they, they start the, they, they actually start. It's this definitely whole, a touchpad. It's definitely a touchpad. Yeah. Um, they actually started. They made it bigger. Yeah. And the, so they, they, man, so they said, based on our discussions with developers, we concluded that the sense of touch within gameplay, much like audio, hasn't been a big focus for many games. Uh, and it was like, and, and so, but then they kind of double down on the touchpad again. <laughs> like, you would think that they have this conversation, they go, no one's using the touchpad, but then they're like, well, let's keep it in for the next controller. Well, what? one thing, <laughs> one thing that I've heard that makes sense to me is that um, forward compatibility or backward compatibility, I mean, yeah. PS4, PS5, there are games that use the touchpad. I mean, there aren't a million of them, but a lot of them even just use it as like a click button. Yeah, and so right. if you're playing that game on PS5, which you ought to be able to do, if the button's not there, you're out of luck. Well, so those games wouldn't be supported. So I feel like they had to keep it. In a way, yeah. And well, maybe, not... they're ho- maybe they're hoping to use it in a better way this time around. I don't, I don't, really see, that being, used I don't see that gen. being an issue when they basically got rid of the light bar. Right, and so and, and so, if you get rid of the light bar in, in any kind of tracking sense, then you can also get rid of the DualShock Four is going to work on the PlayStation Five, right? So as long as they're not stopping DualShock Four production, then you have all those DualShock Fours out in the wild, or all the ones that they can keep selling for all, for anybody who's looking to play PlayStation Four games on PlayStation Five. Like I, I don't see that really being an issue. Um, it's like I, I say, ditch the thing, but it, but obviously it's too little, too yeah. late for that. So yeah. you want to get I into mean, the- nobody likes the light bar anyways either or the so we want to clarify here there's a little bit of a specification you've got the light bar light bar that you'd use for tracking in like Astrobot I've got um, it right which here is, okay yeah I got you okay he's got it. yeah yeah we got this guy right here it just got it that's gone that's not there you can tell and the, yeah. the new like a light bar is just on the sides of the touchpad which means that if you're going to play a game like Astrobot that relies on this thing right here I think you're going to have to use a, a PS4 Dual controller. Shock 4. You're yeah. going to have to use a DualShock 4. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think DualShock 5 won't, or DualSense, I'm sorry. I, it can take so long to get used to saying DualSense. <laughs> yes. Um, it's interesting to me, too, that their names for these controllers just come from the improvement of vibration. <laughs> like, the DualShock is only called that because it had vibration. Right. And this is the DualSense because you can sense the vibration even better. But it's still... Like it's a dual shock. It, it was probably time when for a name upgrade. Dual smell. Man. We need the dual smell. It was yeah, right. It was time for an upgrade, <laughs> though. We we needed a name change because dual shock. I mean, as cool as it sounds, it the it like you said, it, what's referring to is pretty antiquated. I'm hoping it doesn't yeah. change. I'm I'm hoping it looks more different than it actually feels. Um, because that's I mean that's a huge deal. I've always loved the feel of the PlayStation controller, but you know this they've said. So let's get into the features because that is. <laughs> That is like oh, my. Wait. Hold on, real quick. That Before is we do all features, I care about with the features. 
Okay, two cool. things. Two things before we do features. I gotta get this guy in. Yep. But yes. I want to. I want to get in a quick nitpick about the design real okay. quick. I don't like the transparent buttons, the D pad and the really? uh, face buttons being transparent. It looks cheap to me. I don't know why. I think I, I prefer a matte kind of color scheme for those sorts of things. And like even on the see through DualShock Four, the buttons are still matte and yeah, black. They were, yeah. So I, I mean, I the, I it's love not the these. colors. Was it the PSP? Was that, yeah. there, there was something that had transparent. No, what was it? Now I can't PSP think. It had transparent. I, I think, think it, it was did. like the Wii. <laughs> Uh, Wii has a transparent A button too. Yeah, that's. I do miss the colors. Yeah, I do like the colors of uh, Triangle Square XO. Maybe they'll, well, they'll light up when you push it. They'll probably reintroduce a, a version that has the colors for you know. I'd imagine. Controllers. You think they'll light up when you push them? Like the, you push the triangle to light up green? No, 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 no. No, no because the controller's <laughs> already on. It's got the blue light bar. But on. no one's, no one's pushing. Better, but no one's pushing the triangle, AJ. Oh, <laughs> no, that, I mean, that would what, be ridiculous. Only, why would, why would it light up when your thumb is on top of it? Um, all right, let's do only that tip real idea. quick before we forget to. Yes, give actually, there's two, 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 two tips. tips. Yep. I'm going to scroll up a little bit and get the first one, which is from Bill Ramey of the Game Cat. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> uh, that says, oh, it's a 10 euro donation. It says, I know the Darkness roller coaster patch of today is amazing, but you didn't have to make a special Tuesday Games cast just for it. Laffy crying face. Just getting lots of love. Patch is really good though, for real. <laughs> the patch is really good on Dark. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I'll take a look at it. I mean, there, there's been a hundred patches. Why so do you so paint this? maybe this is the magical one. Thank you. Why very do you much, paint Bell this Ramio. very special moment? No, screw you, Bell Ramio. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, the real question is: Is the Dual Sense going to be compatible with Darkness Roller Coaster? That's what I need to know. <laughs> Anyways, we got another one here from Joe <laughs> Grover. <laughs> and it, Joe Grover says, hi, guys. Doesn't AstroBot need a touchpad to launch him into the level? Uh, yeah, and, yeah, and to use your tools, like all your stuff throughout the well, course Well, not only that, but AstroBot needs a light bar yeah. to follow the, the controller. Unless there is some, I mean, is there another way? Does no. it I mean, does it track it any other way other than the uh, the light bar? Or is that the only way? Has, the in that game specifically, in that game specifically like, it does use the light bar. But yeah, there are does, plenty of games that use the gyroscope. It. Yeah, yeah. So I'm hoping there is some other form of uh, of way that it tracks. You know, I don't know. I don't see anything like you know. There's no light bar. There's no light on the back. Um, this this it dashes does... all my hopes for a separatable controller, man. Like all all of my hopes and dreams. Yeah, well, it's weird. We're not getting that. No. no, but but I do like the I do like the. I don't know. There's there's certain things that I'm seeing. Okay, so all I re I mean the thing that I'm I can be happy with no matter what, whether you like it or not. The important part here are the features. Um, and you know, starting with like you said, the the haptic feedback. Um, I do like how they're going for this more immersive experience with the controller and stuff. Um, starting with like the triggers. Uh, the triggers they're supposed to have resistance, and the triggers and the joysticks where they're supposed to have some kind of resistance. Like if you're in mud, then then you start to feel a little bit of push against like where you're pushing. Um, and then like if you're grabbing a bow and arrow, you feel like the tension of the arrow on the line and stuff like that. Um, that is kind of a, a cool feature to me. Yeah, I mean, that's that, that's um, something they that's something they were talking about. I mean, a while ago, right? We've Wasn't known, it? yeah, we've known about this one, but I like that though. No, abso absolutely. Uh, it's and I and I think that's something that it sounds good in my head, but I don't think I'll understand the full capacity of what that feels like with an analog stick until I actually get to sit down and play with the dual sense. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you get here described to you, but there's no way to really have any clue what it feels like in your hands. You know, like. What does it feel like to drive a controller through mud in, in Grand Theft Auto or whatever? Um, one question we're getting a lot of right now in the chat is about the back buttons. And I wanted to talk about this. I yeah. think it's crazy that they introduced this con uh, controller add-on mm -hmm. that everyone thought was prepping for the DualShock 5. They said, OK, this is going to be the DualShock 5 controller. This will make them one-to-one, -one, and you'll be able to use this on dual, uh, PS5 games. We don't see the back That's of this, though, right? There's no photos no, no, in the no, back. No. Here's the thing. This is the big reveal. They talk about every little tiny detail yep. of the controller. You're right. You're right. They don't mention back buttons. And if there were back buttons, we would know about it. So I think uh, 
the other thing that really throws me off is I can't see the bottom of the controller where the head the headphone jack is right now. Right. Um, that's where the adapter plugs in. I don't know if that even still exists for us to plug the existing one into a uh, dual sense or if they'll sell like a different version for the dual sense. Uh, so that is a little strange to me that they would release it so close to the PS5 coming out because it really made everyone I think assume that the the uh, dual shock 5 whatever form it took would have those back buttons. Do you think that Sony, uh, Sony's been kind of known to be as cost effective as possible and keeping the back button out of the out of the dual sense controller when they're already selling back buttons separately do you think maybe they're just like well if you got one for your dual shock 4 unplug it put it in your dual sense and you're good to go and in that yeah, way they're not charging you more yeah. out of the yeah. box or something they i think they're very price conscious and that might that might be part of that i hope that's the case because you know like i said they didn't show or talk about that bottom side of the controller where you plug it in right now mm. where it's got that little port and the headphone jack um, I didn't see that here, but they don't show that angle, so there's no way to tell. I think they're definitely going to have separate stuff for VR. Um, I know Just Incredible was talking about that. Surreal Deal says PSVR 2 will be wireless, optional, and inside-out tracking, no cameras. Oh, I guess we've got I some got... insider information here. Yes. Motherfucker, yes. thanks for joining us and I, giving us the reveal. I, I do think it's a safe... I think it's a yes. good assumption. It's not It's not a horrible assumption it's or a, anything. It's a safe... Obviously, we don't know, but... Um, I think they're going to continue using, you know, whatever, like, 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 I think obviously the DualShock 4 should work with the PS5. Um, yeah. I mean, that, that has to be. It has to. Um, and then that, that's how you continue not only with backwards compatibility, but the light bar tracking, stuff like that. You're already going to have a, most people already have a DualShock 4, a hundred and sure. something million people already have a DualShock 4. Right. So this is primarily going to be most likely like a new feature for like PS5 games. Um, obviously, I mean, there's, <laughs> there's, it's that's obvious. But I like Zwippy's comment. Uh, he's he's Zwippy ninety two says I'm guessing there will be a PlayStation Pro controller with back buttons. Uh, the controller is expensive, and therefore the whole PS5 package would be more expensive. I, I think that's an excellent assumption. I think that you know for for, I mean Xbox has been selling super expensive controllers for a while now right yeah like for their pro controller and so you know to have that option for people who want it uh, would be nice but 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 don't force it on people with the sur well, with the surcharge i have to wonder though maybe they've got the right idea here already because like you know that xbox elite controller costs like what 170 bucks yeah. or some shit like it's very expensive um and the back button attachment is 30 bucks and so if they can leverage all the cool upgrades to the DualShock 5 and then turn it into a pro controller by plugging that thing in with the little back buttons, then you're good to go. I mean, th those buttons don't feel cheap. They don't feel like not pro. Um, so I think maybe it'd be a better value proposition to just sell that as an option instead of having like a $170 controller for people. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't even like notice Maybe this. that's what they're doing. Yeah. Um, who said it? Uh, oh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's Whippy again. <laughs> uh, says the PlayStation button looks weird to me. So that that is the PlayStation button. It's just in the shape of the PlayStation logo now. I didn't even notice Let that. It's it's, oh, yeah. it's not a circle it's not anymore. Circle. It's just the logo. It's it's not like that. That, that is interesting. Oh, that's weird. It that still doesn't feel like it'll be touchably. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't so, want to. I don't know. I'm wondering if it has that. Um, if it has the 3.5 stereo jack. The that's the 3.5 millimeter stereo jack. Right. Yeah, well, that's, what I, was, that's I what I was asking with the back buttons too, because if it doesn't have that, then the back buttons don't work. Right, but he did. Uh, he did, I think, say that you know they are going to have voice chat from the controller, which right. is interesting. Um, I don't know how much I'd use that. I don't know. Um, well, I think they kind of mentioned that they're like, "Hey, this is an option, but if you want to have a long gaming session, you should probably have your headset handy." Right. Right. So, but I wonder if that means. Uh, did he like, say? Did he say anything about game. plugging in a headset though, or did he just say have? Oh, oh he, he said you'll want to have a headset handy for a, like longer play play period. So I'm assuming it's going to work. It's good to have way. a headset but, handy. But like Dave said, we we need mm -hmm. photos of like the back of this thing, the bottom of this thing. I'd like, I'd yeah. like to see the other inputs. Sure. I want to see everything. Yeah. Um, but it from I mean it looks. It does look a lot in several different ways. Looks a lot like the DualShock Four. It's and just we got it. It's got the Xbox curve to it. Space Age the, design. The, the curves at the top and the sides are it, more Xboxy. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. 
I know this has this has like the round here and the round here and and I really like that, but um, I don't know though. Um, it's uh, it's definitely interesting. But so th- let's let's address the elephant in the room, the the light bar on the front instead of the back. I mean, I guess we already kind of did. Yeah, it's not. It's it's a light there's bar. There's no there's no tracking. Uh, there's no light tracking on right. this controller. It's it's a light bar in the sense of the light bar pre PlayStation VR when all it did was signify what player is has what controller that kind of thing it, it signifies that kind of thing it's not for tracking uh, they've gotten they've gotten rid of the light bar for tracking with this controller um, right. so it's, it's this is this is I, I know everyone's concerned about how the PlayStation Four stuff is going to work or PlayStation Four VR stuff is going to work on PlayStation Five this has right. this like has nothing to do with that I, I really think you're going to need for the PlayStation 4 stuff, you're going to need your old Move controllers. You're going to need your old DualShock 4, um, and 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 bring all that. Until stuff they over. release, uh, until they release a new PSVR headset, which will probably come with a new controller. Right, which is, but but again, like I, I don't I don't know if you're going to be able to be playing your old PlayStation 4 stuff with that. Right, I think you're going to need to keep your old headset around um, because it's it's all going to have a different tracking system, and so that's just going to overcomplicate everything. If suddenly you need to have you know light tracking along with along with your new headset, it just it just seems like way too overcomplicated. Well, so what? Uh, another question I have here that I just kind of popped into my head: Do you think this means the end of games like Astrobot on PSVR that use the light bar, that use the touchpad? I mean, you could still use the touchpad, I guess, but. Um, there are several games like that that use it, and right. in Astrobot, I can't imagine the game not having that feature. Right. That feature is what makes the entire game. I mean, why that, would this that be the end of that? Look, at right. the end of the day, well, at the, hey, no, the reason, Brian, the reason it would yeah. be the end is because there isn't a light bar to track anymore. So even if you have a DualShock Four that's compatible with your DualShock Four games you're playing on the PS5, uh, they're not going to develop new games that require a DualShock. Dave, I think what this signifies isn't the end of that. I think this signifies the end of using a DualShock-like controller when you're when you're on the PlayStation like Five when you're playing game. VR games. I think I, I there think... are some games that will always use a controller. You can't say that we're going to get to a point where games well, just Dave, don't have but, DualShock. But, and you have to remember the the we always favor the the first person shooters in particular. I like the ones with the head tracking. We've always, Dave has always made the comparison of the DualShock 4 running around and then aiming with the head instead of aiming with the light bar. No, I, I think I think we're getting way off track. I think I think what the point I was trying to make was that the new Move controllers that will launch, I'm assuming, with the new PlayStation VR headset are, are going to feel very much like having a DualShock that's just been separated. You're going to have all the all the triggers and everything that you need. This isn't Move, con- these aren't, these aren't the move controllers that we're currently familiar with. They're going to have analog sticks and, and triggers, and it's going to feel very comfortable. And, and we're going to be able to play any games with those. You're not going to need a DualShock 4 anymore because you can, because whether you have two hands in the game or not, every game will be playable. Yeah, As, but that's. I, but, he, but here's what I'm saying. I think some games. Out, Sony, Sony has proved that there can be really strong VR titles that actually use the DualShock 4 as a benefit. Like Astrobot has something to it that you can't do on a, a an Oculus touch controller because it's got that aspect of like, here's your little ship where you control everything from and you can slide stuff off the top, throw shurikens like this, like that sort of thing and static. Those are the two that stand out to me. Yeah. Astrobot and static. I think with a DualShock 5, it's harder, or the Dual Sense, I keep calling it DualShock 5. <laughs> uh... I think it's harder to design a game like that because you don't have that controller tracking. Anymore. Don't you think those games you were made in response to the DualShock 4 instead of... In- here's the thing. Sometimes uh, things that are born out of a limitation end up being really cool yeah. and better than they would have been otherwise. Like, if you were playing Astrobot with two touch controllers, I think it would have lost the magic a little bit. And Static is the same exact way. Yeah. It would have lost the magic. And so what I'm saying is that it's kind of cutting off that lane <laughs> of... of people being able to use the DualShock 4. And it also increases the the barrier to entry because everybody has a DualSense when they buy a PS5. Not everybody's going to buy the new Move controllers. They might be hard to get just like the current ones are. So I'm just saying like there needs to be some like... I, I don't, I don't think there does. There needs I, to be some coverage for a regular ass controller. I, I think, at some level. I think the trend... I think the trend... I mean, Sony's, Sony's the only the only company 
that as far as I know, right? That's like that really has focused on making any game VR games with traditional controllers. You know, and I think and I think part of that comes from the move controllers being somewhat limited. So I I, th I think that yeah we're we're gonna miss we're gonna miss something. There's there is some originality that was awesome on PlayStation Four that we're not gonna see because the the, the Dual Sense isn't gonna be you know I mean they they're talking about this as they mentioned did they they mentioned virtual worlds right and I don't know if they meant if they meant that specifically for virtual reality when they were talking about this controller. Um, so I could be totally wrong and this thing could be totally supported uh, in 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 future PlayStation Five VR games. I just don't see that really being the case, though. I feel like we're going to get new move controllers, and they're going to be infinitely better than what we have, and it's going to be awesome. Yeah. And, and, we're, and we're all going to forget right. about, oh, my God, remember yeah, when we used to play with the dual shock? Because on the current controller that we can see right now. That's, that leaves us with a year where there's people developing PS5 VR games that still have to rely on the existing controllers. And so we're not going to see that improvement anytime soon. It's going to be a ways out. And so... I don't know, like people are saying, this is a good idea, and I think they might do this. Uh, you could use inside out tracking because like if you have the DualShock 4 here and the light bar is pointing up at your face, yeah. that can be tracked within the, the camera angle. Um, so that would work. But in the interstitial period where there is no new move controller, there is no inside out tracking, there will be sort of a limitation on what you can do, I think. Well, then you still you still get to use your DualShock 4. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, but just like if people just bought a PS5 for the first time ever, getting into VR, maybe they don't have a DualShock for it. You know. So anything? What else we got? What else you guys want to talk about on this uh, Dual Sense? And uh, I have to. Uh, David Moore said the Move Sense is going to be the next one. Uh... <laughs> I like that immersive move control, more immersive move controllers with the haptic feedback and inside out tracking and all that. The it's all, that's all speculation. Of course. Um, I want to get back to just finalizing anything we can talk about on this controller. Like I said, the mo some of the most important things for me were that the buttons actually pop out. The, the D pad is separated. I do like that. The R one is the size is increased. Um, and yeah, I'm, and he did mention the battery life will be, uh, you know, It'll be uh, pretty good, um, but yeah, I I think you know I'm I'm trying to I'm still trying to like like I need to hold one I want to hold one because yeah. this is like thick and round and bulky and that one looks like it gets thinner. Um, I'm trying to see like how small like it. It's looks. bigger than the DualShock Four. Um, it's got more of an expanded curvature to the outside edges, so where it comes in right now, it goes out as a, a smooth curve so right there you've got two circles on the face right and then that's from there they kind of come out like oof, oof. this one is just a whole swoosh kind of design right huh it's definitely going to be a little bigger but that's how the xbox controller is and that i mean a lot of people with fairly good reason like the xbox controller better uh, i can say i like them both a lot but the there is something to be said the xbox controller right now is pretty good do you, think so, it's, it, do you guys think it's strange that they brought up the, the that they got rid of the share button and replaced it with the create button, but then didn't actually say what the difference is going to be? No. Well, that's well, the really interesting say, part to me, though. I want to talk about that more. He yeah. did say that they're going to be other features, so they're gonna they're gonna it's it's gonna function a lot like the share button, which right. is uh, for everyone who doesn't know, you the share button can capture it can take screenshots, it can capture footage uh to use in like share factory and edit your own footage and then uh you can like sync it with youtube and stuff and then also it's for like streaming and stuff so um it's i imagine the share and the create button is going to be it's got like the same function but he said literally in the article that it's going to have other features like it's basically the same thing but it's going to look different probably have different functions stuff like that well, so the exciting thing to me about this is that we were just talking recently about, um, you know, how can they expand the UI? How can they also make it so that um, when people show off these games, that they look more approachable to somebody? Like, I think, AJ, you were talking about this, where it's kind of jerky if you're watching somebody in a headset do like this and you can't see where they are embodied in the thing. Um, right. We just had this conversation, right, where if you get to a PSVR 2, you have a camera that doesn't need to be used for tracking anymore if you have inside out tracking 
if they could do some kind of mixed reality streaming thing or even an option to just make the VR footage like you know, get rid of that curvature to it, get rid of that fisheye thing, some kind of improvement in sharing. Because I don't know where else they can improve sharing other than VR. It's already pretty good. I mean, you just click the thing, you go to Facebook, well, YouTube. We'll to it's a flat screen game, it looks see. perfect, there's no issues. I'm very um, curious, but I think that uh, means there could be potential improvements in Tempest. VR streaming. <laughs> Anyways, Tempest. I'll shut up, I guess. Tempest Mori and he Hold on, real nope, quick. Tempest nope. Moriandi right. says, "Looks like Xbox controller mated with a PS controller. Best of both worlds." I, I, I uh, sure hope so. Yeah, I hope so too. That shout out goes to Coco the Poop Cat Dog with a two dollar donation, saying, "Blame Summer Lesson, the Brian Paul DLC coming." Yeah, I don't, I don't think anybody really wants that. That sounds, that sounds terrible. Also, I was really bad uh, in school, and so I need a lot more than just a tutor. Uh, hit that for me one more time, David, so we can give a shout out to our breathtaking friend here. Got it. That's for Johnny Rypop the Stray Cat rare with the Canadian six dollar uh, seven dollar donation saying, "I don't know what it, what day it is these days. What? Wait, I don't know what day it is these days. But what day is it? Love you, breathtaking beast. Keep up the grand work. Everyone here is breathtaking, and so are you, my friend. Some heroes don't wear capes. One more time, David. Fuck you, Sorry, I was typing. I didn't want it to be all that. And that's with that's five dollar donation from Joe Grover saying spoiler cast spoiler cast. I'm assuming he's talking about the uh, the separation spoiler cast that we said we were gonna do and then never did. Uh, we should probably do that at some point. So yes, absolutely at some point. <sighs> Holy crap! Uh, yeah, I mean I, I don't know I don't I don't know how far you guys want to go down this rabbit hole of the speculation uh, about what the create button could possibly do. Um, but I I mean. Right now, it, the share button is pretty bare bones. When you go to YouTube, like Dave said, it has the fisheye lens. Right now, it's 720p, 30 FPS, and it's like doesn't make things look terribly good. Um, and then, and of course, you know you're kind of stuck with those comments popping up on the screen. So if you just if you just kind of blow all of that out of the water, and you have more control over what resolution you're streaming at, frames per second, uh, you know if if you can kind of create your own. Uh, template where you say, okay, you know, I want to start with this beginning screen. Almost get like you know for people who aren't. Uh, you know, YouTubers and, or don't spend a lot of time editing, that kind of stuff. Uh, maybe they could kind of have their own template for when they do streams, how they want comments to look on screen, how they how they see comments or hear comments. I think their I think this create button could potentially make like the, the casual YouTuber seem a lot more professional. Yeah, absolutely. And that's good for VR in general because it makes so VR look better. <laughs> right. If, if somebody looks right now at one of our streams from the PS4 directly, I could see somebody saying, wow, this doesn't look that great. It's all curved. This is like motion sickness inducing. I don't like it. Um, Whenever you turn whereas, your head and do the snap turning or something at the or like do the smooth or snap turning at the same time, it looks really jerky on the screen. Yeah. Well, one thing that they could add, um, somebody mentioned this for Half-Life Alex. When you're recording footage from Half-Life Half -Life Alex, you can implement this thing that smooths the camera. So when you play it back, when you export it, um, it looks a lot more natural. It doesn't look like somebody going like this and running around and jerking their head all over the place. It's it it kind of gives it a. Oops, I dropped him. That's perfect. Um, that's that's from W with the two euro donation. Timing. Says hi, hi, right back at Hello. you. That was perfect, Dave. So, you interrupted yeah. yourself. That wasn't me. Yeah, it's fine. Um, but yeah, so that could be cool. I think that would be a nice addition. I don't know, guys. Final thoughts on this thing. <clears throat> it shocked me at first a little bit the way that it looks i wasn't expecting it yeah, um sure. i'm excited about all the features of it though that's kind of like my most important thing and after kind of looking at it a little bit more like yeah it doesn't the look of it doesn't really bother me um i final thought is i want to hold it <laughs> yeah and and feel it and but but i've liked every dual shock there is and this is clearly like a little bit different um but you know, as long as it doesn't feel too different, then I definitely uh, will be happy with it. David? Uh, yeah, I think it looks good. It, it doesn't have some of the things I was expecting, maybe, like the uh, the back buttons. But I guess maybe they've got their reason for that, um, keeping the price down and everything. And they've already got that existing peripheral. So i got to assume that's going to work. Um, it looks like it will feel good. I don't really have any kind of negative impressions of it. Um, I don't love the two-tone, and I hope they have some other options available when it comes out, but we'll see. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, so many people are already posting on Twitter of like an all black one, and like I can see, I can see the appeal of that. But um, I don't know. I'm I'm all for trying something new. Yeah, uh, I was kind of the same way as you, AJ. When when they first dropped this thing, I looked at it and was like, oh god. I'm like, it just yeah. for me, uh, not appealing from the get go. But the more I realized how similar it does look to a Dual Shock Four, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm I'm okay. It I'm, does I'm, actually looking at it. Looking at another picture, it does have so it's not like the edges like this, but it it does have like a smooth kind of flat face right here. So that's nice. It's it's the same thing. It's just a little rounder. That was a five dollar donation from Joe Grover saying this is a needless post just to donate five more dollars. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Joe. You, Joe. I'm really appreciate it. Joe, just for that, I'm gonna give you a little. This is the Joe Grover shot glass, the commemorative Joe Grover shot glass. Excellent. Before we wrap up here, yeah, I'm. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, I got to say, enjoy that shot, Dave. I got to say, I'm just happy that, that that this is, there is something that Sony's revealing to us, right? You know, right. this this is, they're, they're taking very, very small steps. We finally get to see what the new controller looks like. Hopefully we'll get to see what the new console looks like. You know, they said in the coming months, they're going to be revealing that kind of stuff. And then, of course, they finished off the entire thing by saying holiday 2020. They're still saying that even yep. even in the right. midst of the, the coronavirus, we everybody's saying you know with all these games being delayed and with physical media being the real problem with the delays, you know the console launch, like holy fuck guys! I mean it's it sounds like China's kind of back up and running as far as factories go. What I've heard in southern China, <laughs> especially southern China, southern China spe specifically, where a lot of the factories are, mm -hmm. apparently from what I've heard, have been back up and running for weeks now, and in the rest of China is now getting back up and running as well, and that's where all this production is happening in South in South right. China. So. If that's really the case, like we we might be on board for a twenty twenty holiday twenty twenty release date. Everything might yeah. be getting back on track for this. They said it in the midst of all of this instead of saying, "and we'll keep you posted on a new release date," like they easily could have. Yeah. Well, so I think the most likely situation it's going to be more like a switch than it is like a normal PlayStation launch because, like, usually with a Nintendo product, there's this almost like manufactured scarcity where there aren't enough right. of them, and everybody waits, and it's like. Do, do they have them at Target? Do they have them at Walmart? You're checking websites and shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, PS4 is PS3, whatever. Like, isn't usually like that. Usually, if you want one, you can just buy one. Um, and so I think it'll end up being that they're out there, they're available, but they're scarce. Like, they won't have the full supply chain of everybody who wants one gets one on day one. So I think right. there's going to be some fighting over, you know, like getting those PS5s. Um, so I would say probably pre-order it if you have the money and you have the chance because yeah um who, they're not gonna be a ton of them who said it in the chat seller door said a uh, typical response from the human brain when it comes to change it's different right i hate it and you know what i, right. I I'm, I'm not immune to that like that is 100 percent. even when the dual shock 4 was first revealed i remember going oh i don't like the way that looks as much as the dual shock 3 and man you, you you hold those things side by side now you, you even look at them side by side dual shock 4 looks better you hold the dual shock 4 it feels better than the dual shock 3 everything about the dual shock 4 is better than the 3 and I can only imagine that Sony knows what they're doing. They've improved on every single controller, uh, with the exception of the launch PlayStation 3 controller, where they really <laughs> fucked up the uh, the vibration issue. Um, yeah. But besides yeah. besides that one little snafu, man, they've kind of killed it. And so they really know, like, you know, as far as ergonomics are concerned, they know how good things feel in your hand. And they've spent a lot of time researching this stuff. So, I mean, I, I have total faith in them, even if my initial reaction was exactly as Cellador said. New? <laughs> Perfect. Johnny Ripe, another one. Straight cat. Oh, you, oh, you got him. Sorry, man. You got him. Uh, with a seven dollar donation, Canadian saying, since there are two hundred seventy nine people here, rush tournament April twenty sixth. Get your name on the Discord. You are all very, still very breathtaking. Also, send a like slash sub. Uh, yeah, guys, join our Discord. The links in the description uh, makes because that's where we hang out and have this conversation all the time. And of course, if you want to sign up for Johnny Ripe Pops without parole official tournaments, which he does now monthly. Uh, make sure you join over there and tell them you want to play multiplayer meetups. Yeah. Actually, no, there's, there's actually a full channel for it. What am I talking about? It's always better when there's more of us. Yeah. I think Brian coined that phrase. Um, so real quick, I want to say uh, Shen Russo brought up something interesting. Will the launch lineup be anemic because of coronavirus? So even if the console gets out, are we going to see delays on like Ghost of Tsushima, uh, Last of Us 2, like these things that were expected to be PS5 launch titles? I think that's conceivable, and that's probably going to be the case. You think, okay, so all, those games are supposedly coming out before PlayStation 5 launches on PlayStation 4. 
I, I would say they won't hold back on releasing those digitally on PlayStation 5 day one. I don't think that's going to be an issue. No, the whole reason they held back Last of Us was because physical copies. Right. So I'm saying, but, but that's for PlayStation 4. And that's where gonna, they're going to sell a ton of their copies at launch on PlayStation 5. I mean, how many, how many PlayStation 5s do you think they're going to sell in the first month? A million? I have no clue. I, I, I don't, don't. I don't. I mean, launch launch libraries are awesome for people who buy the console at launch, but really, a lot most of those games don't get played by a lot of people till much later. Um, and so, I, I don't think they would hold off on something like that if it came to. And I, and I think by that, I, let's hope. I'm, I'm speculating, but I'm hoping that by the time holiday 2020, uh, infamously quoted by Keb Gret, um for a Gorn release date, I believe. Uh, I think by then we should be seeing physical copies shouldn't be an issue anymore but again i have no idea this we could all be dead by then that's true yeah we could all be dead <laughs> anything's possible so all right you guys i think that pretty much covers it as far as uh as far as the dual sense oh, controller goes and man I'm, I'm super happy that we're finally getting some playstation 5 information uh for so yeah. long sony was so quiet and now it's they're starting to get us information keep, slowly keep it coming so real deal says five million in the well, first month that would that'd be pretty good the funny thing about that is they just like randomly released this info on like a Tuesday afternoon with no pretext, just like, hey, guys, here's the controller. <laughs> so there's no way for us to know when info is coming or how it's going to uh, come. It's just like, purpose. Boop, here you go. Um, but that's exciting, too, because, you know, when I saw this, I was like, guys, we need to get on stream and talk about this. AJ thing. had to quit his job to be here. So, Thank you, AJ. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I'll let you know by tomorrow. <laughs> All right, you guys. Yeah, just keep in mind, this did not take the place of this Thursday show. Uh, PSVR Gamescast Live will air this Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern, as always. Uh, and, of course, we'll probably uh, you know, be talking a little bit more about the dual sense ha, ha, when that rolls around, along with all the news of the week, all the games of the week. And holy crap, there's a lot of games to cover this week. Um, so there's that. All right, guys. Indeed. Thank you, everybody. Last, yeah, last yeah. tidbit. Sorry. Yeah. We got a guy who lives in Hong Kong who also works uh, across the border in Shenzhen, China, nice. where Sony manufactures their products. And he can confirm that Shenzhen is back to almost 100% operational. Nice. So that is cool. That is very good. Thank you, Maybe they won't be as scarce as I thought. It's good to have some info from the ground. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Hello, by the way. Hope you guys are doing well. Yeah, actually, we hope everybody's doing well. Everybody, yeah. everybody in the chat, everybody so out there, all the cats. Uh, I, I know that we've <clears> seen a few comments from people who are who, who are not doing so hot, and we hope everybody has a speedy recovery and feels as good as possible as soon as possible. That's it, guys. Uh, thank you for joining us for this very special episode of PSVR Gamescast Live, where we covered the uh, dual sense. Uh, <laughs> um, and that's it, guys. Uh, thank you again. And I'm sorry, I'm trying to like figure out how to end the show. There it is. I it's think you should end the show by saying uh, dual sense could be the name of a vibrator. That, I think Did you end the, the show already? The dual sense could be the name of a vibrator. That's how we're ending the show. It sounds it sounds Sorry. a lot like the name of a vibrator. <laughs> All right, thank like you. One of those ones with two things on it. <laughs> I think we should end the show before uh, before this gets any worse. All right, yeah. see it. All right, thank you, cats. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, AJ. My name's Brian, and we're out. <laughs>